Now let's start talking about these famous 6.0 liter piezoelectric injectors. This is a good picture. We couldn't resist putting it in here. You can see the four valves. You can see the direct injection from the piezo in the middle and the glowing glow plug. The injector has hundreds of little piezo slices stacked up on top of each other so the combined expansion increases motion. Let's talk about this expansion. Piezoelectric crystals are unique. If we apply a voltage to them, they will change their shape. We apply a negative, they shrink, positive, they expand. So what we are able to do is to apply a high voltage to this system, stack of these to expand slightly, reverse the current flow, have them contract slightly, and have it control our injector duration. We get a two-part. Now, we get very small movements. We only get four one-thousandths of an inch of movement. So this is going to be enough to open a valve, but not enough to open the actual pendle itself. That's going to be a little more complicated. So let's talk about how we're going to do that. We're going to close the stack, by the way, by turning it off and going negative current. We're going to shrink it back, and the pendle spring is going to close because we take away the pressure. So let's talk about how we're going to do that and what their benefits are. They open and close much faster than conventional. Theoretically, they can open about seven times faster than a conventional. Ford is implemented where theirs operate about five times faster. But this allows more precise control of fuel and determines how finely it can be sprayed and distributed. They produce a, a minute feedback voltage, shows a fluctuation of to how much they have expanded. If the expansion isn't what they thought it would be, or as long as it should be, the computer can read this and tell when they're not doing the right thing. As an example, if the computer commands an ejection time of a half a second and the ejector response shows an op only open for 0.496 seconds, the computer will compensate for this lean condition on the next firing for that specific injector. So what we have is each injector is learning what its duty cycle is and what it has to run to give the time. This does not have anything to do with the amount of fuel injected. Here's our piezo injector, a cutaway given to us by Siemens. At the top we have our electrical connector into our piezo stack. The reddish brown area is our stack of hundreds of little piezo crystals stacked together. Their movement is going to open the valving to two springs. They're going to be the secret to making this work. Let's first go look at the small expansion we get out of our piezos. Now piezoelectric crystals expand when we apply a voltage to them and pass a current through them. If we pass a positive current, they expand. If we pass a, a negative current, they contract. What we're going to be using is we're going to use this four one thousandths of an inch of movement to open some valving to springs. And we've got two different spring rates we'll be talking about. But what's going to happen is we can force it open and keep it open by keeping positive current flow as long as we need. And then when we want to, we can reverse the current flow and turn it off without having to wait for the latency of the spring. This is actually being done electrically. Now this crystal can operate seven times faster. It's going to be able to give us some special injection by utilizing two different spring rates. There are two different spring rates integrated into this injector to hold the pendle closed. And we're going to use these two springs. First a small spring at the top, second a larger spring at the bottom. As we first move the, the piezos and we start the injection cycle, and the pendle is open against the first spring, we let pressure in there. It's going to give us a small amount of fuel because it's a small spring, it's not enough to give us the full body. We get our pilot injection. We're going to have two events. This pilot cycle causes the pressure in the cylinder to rise slightly. That's a good thing. And it creates the right conditions for ignition by, for the remaining fuel of the main cycle. This fuel we've just injected heats up as the system is beginning to compress more. This guy has warm fuel, easier to burn, and ready to act as the igniting force for the main fuel. The high pressure injection pump also delivers more fuel that can possibly pass through this little pilot. So what happens is this causes the pressure in the injector to rise, which opens the second spring, which is a stronger spring. It's opened further. It's been closed up to this point. We need a higher injector pressure to open it. Once it opens, we get our main injection cycle. Now this is going to stay open until our piezos contract. So we can contract if we want to and stop this. 
and repeat the cycle and do it several times if we desire. Our pilot is going to be the small. When we open it up, we get that injection. It starts raising pressure, which causes a main cycle to occur and gives us our main injection. So first and left, little injection. On the right, small injection. This can be one event if the computer so desires, or it can be as many as five events in each firing cycle. We will be getting some fuel injection from both, a main and a system. And as they say, we can get up to seven injection cycles, even though Ford only uses a five of them. Now, the pilot cycle is used to reduce combustion noise. It's also going to give us a little pre-ignition cycle to help the distribution of the ignition fuel. The main injection cycle supplies most of the fuel for our power and torque we need, and the after injection cycle can be helped to give us better distribution of fuel. And if we need to, we can do a cycle post-injection. After we've, stuck, we've fired the injection, we've had the firing cycle, we can come back and give one at the end to raise exhaust temperature for regeneration. We're going to be talking about regeneration a little later. Let's stay with our piezo for right now. So these two valves are going to give us two events, a pilot and a main, and we can even have a post if we so desire. The fuel is connected here, come from the fuel rail, so we can have anywhere from 3,100 to 29,000 determined by the PCM and all of our control electronics. It's going to go into the passage in the pendle and go past the piezo stack down to the pendle where we're going to open it up. The nozzle protrudes into the chamber and determines the direction and the quality and the pattern of the spray. Here's where our control looks. We use the power control module. We don't have a separate fuel injector control module. It's all done. We don't have two coils. We have one piezo stack, and we have a plus and a minus. We run current in and out. Several hundred volts up to 10 amps, as we said before. We're not trying to save amperage here. We're not trying to save voltage. We're trying to speed things up. It's, inject it's in one PCM for speed and accuracy. 